Hello guys, in this video, we'll learn about full stack cross-platform development using Rust. In the previous videos of the same series, we have discussed writing a single piece of code which could serve as our front end for mobile application, web app and desktop application. But a cross-platform application, especially a production grade cross-platform application is not just limited to front end. We also need a back end, basically a full stack application to serve to our customer needs. So for that reason, we need a backend application where we can process customer requests, connect to the DB or perform any such complex task which requires intensive resources. Now that backend service can be in any programming language, be it Java, Go, Kotlin, JS, Rust or any other programming language. But we have to manage it separately, maintain it and even write the code to spin it up but Dioxys provides full stack package where we can write our backend logic as server functions and it will automatically generate APIs and we could just call our APIs as if we are calling any other function and it will automatically transform the code as if it's making a call from the client to server on our UI. So let's see how can we do that. In this video, we'll create a full stack application. We'll be using server functions to generate our APIs. We'll get a detailed overview of how server functions work. And we'll be using different hooks like use resource, use server feature from our client side to initiate the call to our backend. And we'll understand the difference of using different kinds of hooks. So let's begin. First of all, move to the project explorer. Make sure you are in a nice and clean folder. Open the terminal. Now I'll be using Dioxys CLI as we have been using in this series. If you are new to Dioxys CLI, some video should be popping on your right top. Make sure you click it, watch it before moving on to this one. So we'll just do DX new. And here we get the options. So I'll select full stack template. And then we will provide our project name. So full stack basic let's say and we don't need router and we can just live with vanilla css for this that's all we need to undo and we can close our terminal and as you can see we have a full stack basic project added so first of all let's add a very basic server function with a very basic component and then we'll build on top of it to understand different kinds of operations and things that we can do. So we can just do async fn get data and we don't pass any body. The response will always be a result with the first side, uh, the type, the, the happy or the okay response that you want to return. So string and the second will be always server function error. So this is how a typical server function will look like. And here we can literally perform any operations like, you know, uh, connecting to a DB or even performing any task on the server. Now to simulate and spend some time on the server, I'll just sleep here for some time. So for that, we'll move to cargo terminal file and here we'll add Tokyo with version as latest and features as time. That's the only thing we need. And in our server function, we can then use Tokyo time sleep and pass duration uh, from seconds as one second and await. And then we can return OK response of the type so I'm returning a string so string from and here we can just say uh, hello from server site and to complete your server function you have to attach the macro on top which is server so this is how a typical server function would look like now in our client side or our front end we'll add rsx for our ui and uh, let's add a p tag and here we can just say server 
returned and let's add a use resource so let result use resource and get data and then right here we can just do result dot value as our result that's returned to the front end so that's pretty much it for our basic first component we are using use resource for now and this is a basic server function that we have now let's run our application and test this so move to the terminal and here we'll just do dx serve so once our app is up and running just move to any of your favorite browser so here you go now if i refresh this page as you can see it says server return none and then when the response is ready when the call is made because we are waiting for one second on the on the back end so basically it's making a call when the data comes it shows you that particular field and we can also check this behavior in the network tab so inspect go to the network tab and we click refresh and as you can see there is a call to get data it's an endpoint that we added so by default the base path of all apis is api and then get data and as you can see it returns a response hello from server side the exact response that we add as part of our server function i refresh again as you can see it makes the call and until the data is not ready it will display us none so as you can see the call was still made now let's change it from one second to 10 seconds so the behavior be more obvious so back to our code you can just keep the hot reloading as it is and here instead of one let's change it to 10 seconds let's say it's a task which takes more time to perform so let's wait for that and let's get back to our browser and try to understand so back to our browser now if i refresh as you can see it shows none and after some time it displays us the output when the output is ready so basically it takes and count the time that api takes to respond so refresh and as you can see the get data is basically refreshing and loading the response so this happens because we are using use resource and the front end is rendered and when the data is ready from your back end basically it goes in and fetches the data it's basically how a common use case of a client server architecture works you send a request to a uh, server basically your front end is rendered you send a request to a server or a backend application and then it process and res responds to you that's exactly how the use server works and renders our data the front end is rendered and basically fetches the data and shows you the response and it's a perfect for all those use cases when you want to display the front end first and based on that you want to you know uh, compile some res resources or do some stuff and then get the data but at times uh, let's say when you are using those complex things as part of your rendering it might look odd to you know show some kind of loading or as in this case it's showing none and then it's replaced by by the by the correct data when the data is ready that might not be a good case when you are uh, using let's say when you, when you are rendering it straightforward to the user so another approach could be you wait and you don't render anything until the response is ready so the website or the 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 ui is rendered only when the data is ready let's see that case as well so for that case what we can do is instead of use resource we can use use server future and here uh, we can just wait for the future to process and only then render whatever we have so let's see the difference first of all let's change it to one to you know understand the difference more clearly and then we can also change it to a more time 10 seconds so back to our browser and now if you guys notice when i press refresh it doesn't go to none the old ui is still there but as you can see processing taking some time and then it's rendered now let's 
get it down to let's say 10 seconds back to our id 10 seconds save it and back so back to our browser and let's say and as you can see it is not rendered and it will take exactly 10 seconds to get rendered so this is another way where you wait for the future to process the response to be ready and you get your response and only then the rendering occurs so again this is another way depends on you how you want your full stack application to look like if you want to you know uh, load all at once and then display your ui or you want to you know load only on demand uh, using use resource so that's how it works use server future and uh, use uh, resource a uh, use server function use resource so back to our id now let's try to understand how can we extract our headers if we want to use it in server functions so in cargo Tomil, we will add http with latest version and in our server function we can just do let headers http header map and extract dot await Okay, as you can see, uh, we have our headers. And now if you want to use any of those headers, then we can just format our response. So let response, and let's say we want to send the headers in the response just so we can display on the component. Hello from server. And so here we can just display our headers and we can just do http uh, header and whichever header you want to access so let's say i want to access user agent header so i access that header and then return the response so this is how our server function looks like and let's sleep for one second so it's a bit uh, quick and here we can add a bit of style as well so let's say color as white. So this is how we can extract our headers. Now let's save this and let's taste it. So let's open our embedded browser and we can test using the embedded browser as well. We can just do localhost 8080. And since we are using use server future, so it waits for the future to process and then display the front end. And as you can see, it prints our user agent, which is basically how our user agent looks like. So this is how uh, we can extract our headers. Now let's understand how can we pass on a body to our server function. So first of all, we need to add a struct. So we can just say struct, uh, let's say request. You can name anything that you want and let's pass in the request name as string and on top we will add derive serialize from survey and let's add both serialize and deserialize so we can just say deserialize deserialize and next thing that we need is clone and debug so to pass on uh, let's name this now a different uh, maybe or let's keep it as it is and now let's pass so we can pass our request as a request and here we have to pass our request so name as string from uh, client here maybe whatever the name you want to so this is how we can pass some data to our uh, server functions and here we can access it so to access that data we can just simply do in the format as well so let's say data and 
request dot name that's pretty much all so you can access it you can you know use it but i'm just returning it in the response as you guys can see here so let's save this now open the embedded browser and as you can see it displays the data client here which is the thing that we pass to our server and it basically curates the response adds the request name which is client here or anything you want to say let's say jack here and we hot reload it and as you guys can see now it says jack here so this is how you can pass a body you can extract the headers and this is how your server function can look like to call it from your code you don't need to add any you know path or resource you don't need to consume the request crate to you know pass on the body everything everything happens in the black box from dioxys it's amazing and instead if we try to use use resource here in that case we will not be required to wait to render so we can just go to localhost 8080 and as you can see it displays none and the response comes so again i hope you guys understood the difference between use server future and use resource and how can we add our own server functions and then here you can add multiple uh, properties to your or arguments name named arguments to your uh, server future uh, is for server function so you can add the name prefix so let's say prefix i showed you in the network tab previously the prefix by default is slash api so let's say i want a slash data then i can add it here uh, similarly we can add name as well so let's say i want to add name as uh, hello data something like that so you can add all those stuff that uh, we want to add now try to explore it on your site and let me know what you guys think about server functions and what are the use cases where you will try to use in your application and how does it look to you guys so i hope you guys understood this concepts if you do like the video share with your friends i'll catch you in the next video of the